Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This lecture video contains only introductory material. More detailed information will be contained in other instructional videos in business forecasting in the Harper Classroom. This video is the introduction to business forecasting, introductory examples with Excel. In this introductory video on business forecasting, I define stationarity, components, and other related terms in business forecasting and apply the mechanics of these four techniques, moving average, exponential smoothing, regression, seasonal indexes, to these three time series. The last time series I cover in other instructional videos on the Harper Classroom, but not here. I include it in this list to be complete. Let's start with stationarity. Stationarity is the overall nature of the time series. So when you look at the overall nature of these three time series, the first one is level. So it's stationary. The second one is non-level because it's increasing. That would be non-stationary. The third one is level. Even though there's variability, it's still stationary. A term associated with stationarity is the stationary mean. A description of the stationary mean would be the average of all the values in the range of the time series. Well, the variability around that stationary mean, if it's pretty much the same from the beginning to the, gen to the end, it's stationary. But the second time series here at the beginning, it's below. At the end, at the end, it's high. So therefore, it's non-stationary. But the third one has the same variability at the beginning as it does at the end. So it's stationary. Next is components. A component is a cause of variability around the stationary mean. So we bring back in these stationary means and look at the variability around the means. Let's start with random. Well, there is variability around this mean, but there doesn't seem to be any pattern, and it's unexplained. So unexplained variability around the stationary mean is called a random component. The second time series is non-stationary. We see the non-stationary character of the, of the time series does introduce variability. So the variability due to the non-stationary nature of a time series is a trend component. And the variability around that trend line is unexplained. So therefore, unexplained variability around the trend line is a random component. The third time series has variability around the stationary mean, but there's a pattern that repeats every four. Variability due to re a repeating pattern is called a cyclical component. But if each one of these time periods is a quarter and four quarters is a year, then this pattern repeats every four quarters or every year. So a cyclical component that repeats every year is called a seasonal component. And the unexplained variability between the years is a random component. Now that we see stationary and components, let's see some examples of these three time series. So first is stationary time series. The consumer price index here from 2006 to 2016, this dark line is all items. And we see here it looks like there might be a slight negative trend or from 2011 on it's fairly stationary. But if you take out food and energy, and notice it's relatively stationary, the lighter line. Non-stationary. E-commerce sales as a percentage share of the total retail sales. And this is from the U.S. Census Bureau. We can see here that this is a fairly linearly increasing line, so it's a non-stationary time series. But we see right here in 2008, it looks like there's an anomaly. It looks like it flattens out right here, but then it goes back to a trend line. So we know in 2008 we did have a recession. So re a recession could be another causal factor that affects the time series. So there are two mechanisms going on here. One is the patterns within the time series itself. The other is outside causal factors. And that's called causal forecasting. So the next time series is monthly housing sales of, of a single family unit. We see here this is 1975, 76, 77, 78, 79, 1980, 81, 82, 83, 84, 1985, 86, 87, 88, 89, 1990. Well, you get the idea. Every year we have a pattern that seems to repeat every single year. A pattern that repeats every year is referred to as a seasonal component. But we also see, well, 1982, it doesn't look like there's much of a pattern, but there is a little bit of a pattern there. It does go up and come back down. We also see a pattern that repeats more than just a year. 
from 75 maybe to 82, 83, 83 to maybe 91. So there's another cyclical pattern in addition to the seasonal component. So we have a cyclical component and a seasonal component in this time series. So now let's see how to apply the mechanics of these four techniques on these three time series with Excel. So let's bring in Excel. So I've already typed in my time series and I plotted the time series and let's assume it's an annual time series for here the 12 years. We'll look at the moving average assuming a random component. So if we want the forecast for time period 13 to 14 we average the values. Those are the moving average. But we don't average all the values. We only average the last few values. And the number of values that we average is called the window of the moving average. So the window could be 2 or 3 or 4. But whatever the window is, we average those values and that's the forecast for the very next time period. So let's assume our forecast, uh, we want a moving average with a window of 2. And so we come down here, we take the average if we have a window of two, we average the two previous ones. It's always the two values. It's always the value the closest to our forecast. Return. And then we can click that, lower right, get our plus sign, and copy down. And there's our forecast, 45 for time period 13. Or let's say we want a moving average with a window of three. We'd come down, take our average, and now we average three values. But whatever the three values are, the average of those three values will be the forecast for the very next time period, time period four. Copy those down. And now our forecast is four, 46 and two thirds. So now, exponential smoothing. I have the same annual time series plotted. And exponential smoothing assuming a random component. The equation is the forecast equals alpha times our data plus 1 minus alpha times our last forecast. Now for alpha, let's let that be 0.2 and that's a given. Now for our forecast, to keep it simple, let time period 2, the forecast, equal the value of the time series in time period 1. So now in time period 3, our forecast, we have our data from time period 2, which is our time series, and our forecast from time period 2. Now we can use the equation, which is equal to our alpha times our data, plus 1 minus alpha times our last forecast. Since we want the same alpha for every time period, then we come up here and we highlight C3, F4 to freeze it. Highlight C3, F4 to freeze it. And now we can copy that down. So now that we have this set up, we can change our alpha to 0 0.3, 0 0.5, even 0.9. Now, regression. For regression, let's assume we have a weekly time series plotted. It's a non-stationary time series. Our linear regression assuming a trend component and a random component. Our forecast would be the intercept plus slope times our time period. In this case, it's a week. So we'll use our functions the intercept function. In the intercept function we have known y's comma known x's. Our known y's is our time series comma our known x's is going to be our weeks in parentheses plus our slope so be our slope function. Again our known y's comma known x's. Our known y's is our time series comma our known x's is our weeks. And now it's times our time period, which is our weeks, in this case it's week one. Now we want the same intercept and slope for every time period. So again, we come up here and we highlight F4. We highlight for return. And now we can copy that down. And there's our forecast for the future. So now let's go to seasonal indexes. For seasonal indexes, assume we have a quarterly time series. So seasonal index assuming a seasonal component and a random component. The first thing that we do is I take the time series, I put the first row as year one, the second row is year two, the third row is year three, that's called blocking it. The reason I do that, the first quarter of every year the difference is random. Since the difference is random, to get the forecast, I take the average.
and once I have the average I copy it over. And there's my forecast for year four. This video introduced terminology and these techniques with simple calculations for these three time series, which is the objective of the lecture videos. Other instructional videos in the Harper Classroom will go deeper in this material and include this last time series. So this ends the introduction to business forecasting introductory examples with Excel. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.